that I think God goes way out of his way to really, and I mean really, and I don't mean just sort of, I mean really test my patience. <laughs> First I go and get all my clothes on, go out on the porch when it's cloudy and wind's blowing like crazy and by golly, you know, I'm all dressed up in my nice clothes, you know, and I kind of feel good about it and I'm talking about how God does changes, you know, and he changes the circumstances and we have peace, you know, and, and joy and love, you know, and the fruit of the Spirit working in your life, you know, and God's doing this and God's doing that and you're feeling really good about it, you know, and you're kind of like... You know, you think you got your feet firmly planted in some house that you own or something, then God wipes it all out, you know, and you go, what happened? Well, because there's changes, you know. So, of course, since we're talking about peace, the weather changes. It's sunny outside. So I got to take all the clothes off, you know, and I... I gotta put my t-shirt on, you know, and then I gotta go get clean up again because I look kind of scuzzy. Now that I'm not wearing all my clothes and standing outside, I look kind of, kind of scuzzy, like, you know, one of those couch potato kind of guys, you know, just kind of lay around and do nothing. But then I figure, oh, well, you know, I'll get cleaned up and I'll go ahead and record outside. So I decide, okay, I'll go ahead and do that. And then I hear, now the wind is blowing about 30 miles an hour. Think about this for a minute. Wind blowing, 30 miles an hour. My landlord, God bless him, he's a pastor. That ought to warn you to begin with. He's a pastor and he's a landlord. Okay, we're, we're good so far. Now, he's a pastor and he's a landlord and he's doing maintenance, lawn maintenance. Uh-oh. The wind's blowing 30 miles an hour. So he's got a blower to blow leaves. And he's deciding to do it right now in 30 mile an hour winds. Having worked for several pastors, several ministries, having done things behind the scenes, the one thing that we used to talk about, not just with the church secretaries or with the elders and the deacons and everybody, but flat out truth was you really didn't want the pastor to get involved in anything except giving the message on Sunday morning or whatever he was doing. But you just always wanted the pastor to go do his thing so that we could take care of the practical things because I don't know about you, but you know, I haven't always had such great success with these men of God trying to do other things. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's some really dynamic men of God out there, but, you know, most of the time I find them starting things and not finishing them, borrowing books and not bringing them back, taking things and not returning them. Matter of fact, you know, I seem to see a lot of carnality in a lot of these men of God that, you know, <laughs> wish I could get away with that. <laughs> but nine times out of ten, I usually got hired to fix and clean up the messes that most people made. And then, when I was still a baby Christian, I learned something very unique. I decided, I'll go take care of it before they could mess it up. So... That was partially why I used to get moved into all kinds of different positions, because problem solving and I'd take care of it before it happened. Boy, I tell you, I just can't figure out in my mind why a pastor, landlord, picks up a blower to blow leaves on a day with 30 mile an hour winds that are going to blow most of them away anyways and blow down some more and it's going to last for the next two days so 
And it's not his normal day that at one time he did seem to have a certain day that he was doing that, so I thought, well, okay, I won't record on that day. Oh, well, I just figured God wants to see how I personally deal with peace. <laughs> no, I don't care. The humorous part is it didn't bother me a bit. I just came inside and I, I, I smile because I walk outside and I kind of look and I go, Really? <laughs> 30 mile an hour wind. Lord, look, 30 mile an hour. Is he learning something here? You know, I mean, God, are you giving him a object lesson about the wind both with or will? You need to know where it's coming from and where it's going. So do the one advice for God. Did you actually tell him to go out into the wind with the blower to blow the, the leaves around? Like maybe he's, maybe he's being sneaky, Lord, you know, and he's blowing them so that the wind will blow it out into the street or something. Maybe he's one of those kind of people. Nah, Lord, I don't want to think that thought. That's kind of corrupt. That, that, that sounds carnal. Well, maybe, Lord, you know, that he's just kind of like, you know, his schedule is so busy, you know, that being a pastor and being into all these other things, you know, that maybe he needs to, you know, do it on this day and, and not some other day. Oh, Lord, I can make that up, you know. Or, are you trying to tell me something, Lord? Am I supposed to move? <laughs> Please! Please, can I move? <laughs> we are moving sooner or later, one way or another. This place is too small, too confining. They tried to make so many different weird rules without putting them down on paper. Think about that. They keep telling me to not do something that they're telling everyone else supposedly the same thing, but they're getting away with doing it. But as soon as they ask me not to do it, I immediately stop doing it. Like putting plants on, you know, outside on the deck or, you know, doing things that could be seen from, you know, I'm second story could be seen from down below. So I keep complying like I'm supposed to as a Christian, even though other people aren't. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of go, you know, Lord, maybe it might be time to kind of like move, you know? Maybe I should get out of the way so you could take care of whatever it is this person's going through. I mean, oh well, you know, <laughs> sometimes no matter what you do, you just got to let God see you through it. You just go with the flow and let God know. And that's it. Other than that, don't get involved. Don't worry about it. No problem. The sad part is, you know, whenever somebody does something to you personally, just so you know this, I want you to understand this principle that God has. God has just scales. Now, he's going to keep those scales even. Like if you burn somebody, you're going to get burned. Maybe not by the same person, but God who sees all is going to balance out the scales because he doesn't want you coming to heaven owing anything. So it might be a good idea to get out of debt too. But the point is, he's going to balance it out because he's trying to clean up your life and fix you and kind of arrange you so you're not kind of making stupid mistakes, you know, or doing dumb things, you know, that you shouldn't have gotten yourself into in the first place. So keeping scales even, just so you know, I've seen in my life, people tell me, because I write this on the internet, they say, well, what if somebody comes at you with a gun? I say, shoot me, please, I'll go home. Well, what if they come after your wife? Shoot her, please, she'll go home. What if they come after your kids? Shoot them, please, they get to go to heaven. Well, that's not very loving. So I'd rather have them here on hell on earth, you know, instead. Personally, I think God could take care of me just fine. If it's not my time to go, I'm not putting myself in jeopardy. And I'm not like extending myself into some place I'm not supposed to be. But if I'm doing what God tells me to do, according to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and I'm faithful to do that, I think God could take care of me a little bit better than I could protect myself. Well, that's not very wise. Well, you see, God's skills are just so... 
I've seen in my life how I don't say anything. Somebody offends me, hey, you know, if they don't want to make amends that I've tried or they don't want to participate in sharing in some way to restore a relationship. Personally, I used to be a little malicious about it, but I'd go over and I'd grab a cup of cool water. And I might even be bottled water, might even be expensive water, but I'd come over and say, hey, want a glass of water? Now, there's a few of you, you know, little carnal Christians out there that are going, I know that scripture. Give your enemy a cup of cold water and you heat fiery coals on your head. <laughs> That's me. And you thought I was spiritual. And you thought I was being nice. Oops, did I give you a cup of cold water? <gasps> now you know what I really think. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. But, let's get real for a minute. Every time that I tried to do that to somebody, somebody did something to me. So the scales were just. They were balanced. I've seen lately, since I moved in, been here a few years, I think a few years, have to ask my wife. We have a gate that's never been broke. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It's never been broke. I was kind of whining, you know, the other day about something that, you know, they told me I couldn't do. And I was kind of like, man, you know, this is... Told my wife, I said, you know, honey, I've been very patient and, you know, very kind and considerate. And, you know, I've been listening and letting them do their thing, you know, and do whatever they want to. But next time they have to complain about something... I'll go because it's time I got involved, you know. They keep telling you these things and then, you know, you have to listen to me whine about it afterwards and complain, you know, and then I repent and God takes care of it, you know. Next time that they decide that they want to, you know, object to something that really they haven't put in writing and that, you know, if I wanted to defend myself, I mean, obviously I could get a, I could be just and right and holy and in what I'm doing, but, you know, they're just learning, I guess, so we'll let it go, and I'll keep doing it. Well, that day, somebody ran through the, the gate, the wooden little wooden gate that comes up and down. Smashed it. I didn't think about it. Didn't think much about it. Now it's two days later. Three days later, they got it fixed. It got smashed again. This carnal little mind of mine that's, you know, really corrupt went. And said, oh, shucks. <laughs> really? Scales are just. Maybe we ought to think of it for ourselves and be careful lest there, but for the grace of God, there go I. But also, there are times where we should not rejoice when our enemy or our friend or our neighbor or relative or whoever may be, pastor, is on a learning lesson, you know, and we think that, you know, oh, we're so much better. <laughs> Uh, no, we're not. I've already been there. You know, I've been on this side where all of a sudden God went, Whoosh! I went, oh, man, you know what? When God kind of like bounces you back from what you did, reap what you sow. <laughs> that ain't fun. Matter of fact, he kind of seems to be like this. When it's God's side and he's trying to teach you something, it seems like it goes like this. When you were trying to, you know, like kind of puff yourself up, you know, he goes, Whoosh! I was brought low lots of times, learning my lessons. Yep, by golly. <laughs> so you know what I do now? I almost, <laughs> don't get me wrong, I have a heart that's tender, you know, so I almost get a kick out of watching God operate because it's kind of like, you sure you really want to do this? You know, I'll ask people, you really sure you want to mess with 
the living God? You, you really sure you want to do something stupid and then see if God's going to balance out the scales? I don't know. You could call it bad karma. <laughs> you could call it chickens come home to roost. Or you could look in the scriptures and see that God is a just God and that he will balance out the scales. So the wicked and the good, man, he still manages to work on both of them at the same time. Hmm. One to salvation, you know, and one, they kind of get what they want now in this life because they're going to hell. So unless they get saved, <laughs> this is the closest thing to heaven they get. And that's disgusting because this is the closest thing to hell that we get. <laughs> now think about that. This life is as close to hell as you get. Boy, how much better heaven is. But the sad thing is, is that for the person who's bound for hell, who maybe is getting all prosperity up, who's getting all their rewards now, who's getting all riches up, this is their heaven? Yeah. That's gross. Maybe we might want to tilt our scales so that we're kind of like, you know, like humbling ourselves so that God has to kind of balance it out by blessing us. Think about it. Let Christ live through you. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith and by adherence to and reliance on and complete trust in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Some people need to unlearn some things before they can start learning what God wants for them. For example, some people try to manipulate others with all their self-pity or anger. Boy, isn't that true on the internet. If you like me as a friend, you'll spam this, scam this, and you'll repost it 10,000 times, you know, because otherwise God will curse you. <laughs> yeah, right, get away from me. <laughs> they believe these emotional tools will get what they want from others. Oh, but if I could just see it on your wall, then I'll know that you like me. <laughs> get real. Some people who have been hurt or abused feel that they have to take care of themselves because nobody else will. Give me a break. The other night there was some person who was saying, Oh, I'm so lonely. I wish I had somebody to just hug me. I'm so lost. My family died. And it's been years. And I don't have anyone. Get over it. Go to church. Get a friend. Find a pastor. Learn. Grow up. We all got a story. Jeez. <laughs> now don't get me wrong. I'm sympathetic. Hey, you know what? If you're going through it, I'll be there. Matter of fact, when my mother-in-law was dying, we went and lived with her for a year while she was dying. She was out of it, so we had to clean her up, you know, and it was pretty disgusting, you know, and had to be with her 24-7, so we did it, my wife and I. So I'm very compassionate, you know, I understand those situations and circumstances that people go through, and when they lose loved ones, you know, there's a certain amount of sympathy and empathy that we feel. But you move on. God doesn't leave you feeling sorry for yourself that you don't have anybody to hug. Go to church and get a hug. Come on. Get real. You know, I mean, that's what church is for. We share in our rejoicing as well as in our sorrows. So I understood where the person was coming from, but I also understood how some people not only choose to be miserable, they want to be miserable. They have decided that they enjoy misery because misery loves company. And they want to involve others vicariously in their misery if it's been years of that going on. Move on, <laughs> please. Both attitudes display the common fear. What about me? What about me? 
Me, me, me. I, I, I. It's not about you, it's not about he, it's not about she. It's all about me. Isn't that a country song? It's sure not a Christian song. But Paul offers us a life-changing principle to follow. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ liveth in me. Galatians 2.20 When Christ lives through you, you will enjoy every day of your life. The bottom line is, it's not about you, it's about who's in you. That's all. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty, as the word says, succinct. S-U-C-C-I-N-T. I know what it means to me. But we all have issues, like I have with living here. We all deal with problems. We all have circumstances that aggravate us or frustrate us. But it could bless us, too. We could turn the scales to watch and see what God might do. Because he can balance us out from not being all so off kilter and offset to being perfectly balanced and joyful in what we're going through. Praise the Lord, you know. Man, I just saw that that, you know, gate got broken up. And, you know, I could probably go down there and bless them by helping them or praying for them. Matter of fact, since I know that he has probably some issue, I might just pray for them that God bless them in the the work of their hands and the feelings that they have right now over the aggravation that there is and seeing that which they had just prepared, no matter what the reasons, no matter what the circumstances, that they had just prepared it and now it's broke again, God help them. So you see, it's all a matter of who's in you to let out of you so you can do what you should do in the first place which is to walk with God, to talk with God, to let God live in you so that you no longer live, but Christ liveth in you.